Well, when we discovered that bacteria cause disease, we started mandating that hospitals wash their hands, working in hospitals. Uh, when, well, we have a long history, actually, of figuring out things are toxic and saying enough already. Sometimes we regulate them. You know, tobacco kills people. Well, okay, we'll tax it. It's already in wide use, and a lot of people are addicted to it. Alcohol kills people. Yeah, we'll figure out a way to make some money off it. Now, uh, this study is uh, Lustig. This is the um, this is the scientist. The journal Plus One Link has uh, increased sugar consumption. Here, this is the this Mark Bittman wrote this piece for the New York Times. It's called "It's the Sugar Folks." He says a study published in the February twenty seven issue of the journal Plus One links increased consumption of sugar with increased rates of diabetes. They used to think that if you ate a lot of sugar, you got fat, and and that those fat cells were somehow less uh, vulnerable to insulin, less reactive to insulin. In fact, insulin resistance was the phrase that it had come up with, and that as people got bigger, they became more insulin resistant, and therefore they became diabetic. But no, it turns out that it doesn't matter if you're fat or skinny, if you're eating a lot of sugar, uh, you get diabetes, so the sugar is essentially a toxin. So the question is, should the FDA, as the Center for Science and the Public Interest is petitioning the Food and Drug Administration to do, should they label sugar, because now we know that it causes a biological consequence, should they label it as a drug or at least as a food that can be regulated like they did with licorice? Licorice has an active ingredient called glycerin. And it's a stimulant to the adrenal glands, not unlike caffeine. The only problem is it's about 40 times more addictive than caffeine. People are actually getting addicted to glycerin. And so about 10 years ago, the FDA said, that's it. Licorice and kids were getting addicted to licorice candy. You had to take the glycerin out of licorice. And so now if you want to get glycerin, you have to buy raw licorice roots and chew on them. You can't get it in licorice-based candy anymore. Should... Uh, the FDA similarly takes sugar off their generally recognized as safe list. It's called grass. And at a certain level, start either regulating it or warning people about it. Is this something that should be in the purview of the FDA? Julie Gunlock is on the line with us. She's the director of the Women for Food Freedom Project. I'm guessing that means, and, and senior fellow with the Independent Women's Forum, IWF.org. Julie, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me on. I'm guessing by food freedom you mean... Freedom for the billionaires, freedom from government. <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. That's exactly what you mean. Yeah. No. Well, I'm talking uh, about the, you know, the sugar <laughs> industry is a multi-billion dollar, arguably a multi-trillion sure. dollar industry. Sure. I mean, you, we're, we're going to start this right off uh, with the shill argument that, you know, any defense of this or criticism of this study. But really, the researchers themselves, the, the actual lead researcher, Basu, he, he offered some clarification after Bittman's piece where he said, this study, he actually said this a quote. He said, the study doesn't say anything about any specific person's diabetes risk or provide any kind of dietary advice. And then later on, he said, the study also can't inform any specific policies like the New York City ban on large soft drinks. So I love how that, like, you, you realize like, you, that what you I, just I, said you was almost. Are talk about this study as being proof that this is, that this, right. like, sugar is toxic and we need to ban it, yet the researchers themselves have said that this shouldn't inform any policy. And well, let's, let's, have, let's, have, let's have a conversation about that, Julie. Sure. First of all, the argument that was made by the tobacco uh, industry people back in the day was that you can't prove that this particular cancer was caused by that particular cigarette, and therefore you can't make any specific links of causality. And that argument stood for 40 or 50 years. They were able to hold off regulation and litigation using that argument until finally it broke down. And that's what you, that, is that not the argument you just made about sugar? No, I'm, I was actually quoting the lead researcher right. who, who said, no, I am. Like, I'm, I'm, right, and he's I'm saying there, you, can't, article, you can't tie a specific person's this, diabetes. But I'm actually, I'm quoting the lead scientist on this, art, uh, on this study who said, this study does not inform. And they also, and he also talks about how there's more research that needs to be done. And, you know, Which is what the tobacco the, people were saying. He's not the only one. D David Katz, I mean, he is the director of the Yale Prevention Research Center, hardly a shill for industry. Right. He also criticized 
Bittman, he didn't criticize the researchers. He criticized Mark Bittman for like ramping up the alarmism and, and you know, NCSPI for saying this stuff needs to be to- needs to be labeled as a, as a toxin. I, he, you know, he had some real criticism as well. I mean, if you want to have a conversation about this, we can about how the sure. study isn't should not should not set policy that Julie, more research needs to be done. Julie, if let's let's put this in the abstract for a minute. All right. Uh, let's assume that the study is flawed and imperfect, and sugar may be a toxin, and it might not be a toxin. Uh, you know, I and and I, I can tell you, you know, I used to work in the advertising business. I used to be a partner in an ad agency back in the '70s, and in 1978 or '79, I wrote personally, me myself. I reviewed the research and I wrote what became a 20, as I recall, 28-page booklet that was published by one of the lo- two largest. Ch- cereal manufacturers in the United States, who was our largest client, uh, that went into uh, tens of millions of school children's hands the next year, titled Sugar, the Essential Nutrient. I wrote that. So I, I am familiar with this debate, and I'm still burning off the karma from that. And, and uh, so uh, look, let's, I, let's just yeah. assume for a moment that sugar might even sure. be an essential nutrient. Sure. But uh, if it was determined, that sugar was actually, you know, the a a factor, a sure. leading factor in the production of diabetes in in people. Would at that point you suggest that the FDA should take it off the grass list and well, I, and regulate it? I totally understand your point, and I think it's a good question. I think that what we need to consider, though, Tom, is that. You know, the study said, the researchers found, and again, I'm going back to the study. I mean, I understand you want to talk in abstracts, but I think it's important that we talk about the facts here. And the researchers said that sugar availability accounted for roughly one quarter of the global rise in diabetes between 2000 and 2010. So, Tom, that's right. fine. Okay, and tobacco that's accounts they, for about a quarter of deaths by cancer. They have said, they have said, so what accounts for the other 75%? Perhaps pizza? Maybe, maybe steak, maybe potato chips. I mean, where are we going to stop, right? Because if, if that accounts for 25%, certainly something else counts for 75%. Maybe we should be more concerned about the 75%. But this is the thing, Tom, I think this is important to... You really to, make, mean I, to make that argument. I think, I think what's important... Yes, I do. And I think what's also important to realize, Tom, is that we don't ne- necessarily need regulation. I mean, I don't know how much time you spend in a grocery store, but... I have three little kids. I'm there all the time. And there is plenty of no sugar, low sugar. If people are going to demand this, I suspect the industry will. Now, I know you hate that argument, but I suspect the industry will say, hey, maybe we, you know, there's all No, I'm just in favor lot. of disclosure. There's I, you know, if, if, a lot if, of thing, there's already a lot of Julie, things. if, you know, if, if, uh, if I knew when I walked through the supermarket which products were genetically modified and which ones weren't, do you, do you I'd be very happy, like, but I know that you're opposed to my knowing that. But let, let, no, let, let's not let's not good, good grief. And 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 if and if and if talk about GMOs, but I mean, let's let's. But but let's if sugar was <laughs> demonstrated to cause just twenty five percent of who, diabetes, who, who, who in the, who would in the you be would you I mean, be opposed to or in favor of foods containing sugar at the very least being labeled as? This may cause you to get diabetes. No, I am not in favor of that. That is so even absurd. even if what it was factual. It? Tom, really, honestly, who do you hang out with? Who thinks sugar is health is a health food? I mean, most people understand if they're gonna if they're gonna fill their face with with sugar. It's not good for them. I think people understand that. I don't think we need a label. You're you making have... the argument that the tobacco industry made about their cigarettes. No, 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 I'm not. I'm actually, I have a lot more confidence in the American public. Unlike you, I mean, it's absurd. That's what Lou Gerster was saying back in the '80s. But it's in, in it's the absurd. '90s. But let me ask you, don't you think it's absurd? I'm sitting in the grocery store, I have a bag of carrots and a, and a bucket of ice cream, and I'm like, gosh, which one is healthier for me? I mean, people understand this stuff. It's common sense. I don't think the presence of more sugar in people's diet and that it, and people end up being sicker or getting diabetes is a shock. So thing. even if we knew that it caused one particular disease, we shouldn't require the companies that sell it to tell people that. Companies are doing enough to give people choices. People have to make the right choice. Okay, Julie Gunlock. Senior Fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, IWF.org. Thank you, Julie.